Welcome to this special episode of Rattling the Bars. Over the years, we have been following the case of Momia Abu Jamal, a political prisoner held in Pennsylvania. In 1982, he was sentenced to death. The state attempted to execute him several times. There was worldwide protests and outcry that prevented that. He is now serving life without parole in Pennsylvania. And we find now that he has COVID-19 as well as congenital heart condition. Uh, and his life seems to be at risk. So joining me today is Pam Africa, who is a member of Momia's family. Thank you for joining me, Pam. Thanks, I wanna move. And Pam, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to be on your show. <laughs> Can you tell us right now, what's the situation with Mumia? Right. You know, Mumia needs everybody's help right now. It's clear and very evident that Mumia did not have a fair trial um, and that, you know, he was railroaded. I'll go back into that. But right now, Mumia's health is, you know, in dire need of all our help. Mumia called me um, three weeks ago to let me know that um, two weeks ago that he was having problems breathing and that, you know, he felt as though he had weights on his chest. And he was saying that, you know, he said, I believe I have COVID. And he had told me in a prior conversation almost a year ago that, you know, he believed he had COVID then because he was very sick and all, but, he, um, you know, it, it, it passed, you know, he said asystematic or something like that. And all, uh, but this time, you know, he was suffering a lot and he said, I believe I have COVID. So he wanted me to get the information out. So I did, when I went to, um, you know, put the information out, we had enough pressure on this government that they rushed in, got him there, took him to the prison hospital. Then they released Robert, uh, the lawyer for the DOC contacted our lawyers and told them that they gave Mumia two tests. One test said that he did not have COVID. The other test said that he never had COVID. So, you know, all, you know, then we don't hear from Mumia for four days, right? Mumia made a call to us last week at a press conference. And then when he, what he told us was that he had been in the hospital for four days and uh, that the hospital performed the test and they said he did have COVID. He also said that they diagnosed him with con, um, congestive um, heart failure. Congenitive, congenitive heart failure. And this is very dangerous, you know, happening with Mumia. He also told me that cause Mumia weighed 245 pounds. When I talked with Mumia, he was down to 215 pounds. This is weight that was lost from Mumia in a matter of a week's time. Um, and it came from the congested heart failure. They pulled 10 pounds of water from Mumia's lungs and because he had he had blew up like three times his size and not only that we found out and I sent you copies of the pictures pictures of Mumia before when they tried to kill him with hepatitis C they kept mixed diagnosing him and they kept giving him you know medication and all that caused him to have this terrible skin problem and all the skin and all looks like at that particular point it looked like you know like a black soft cracked leather and the skin itself you know like a chicken's neck and all you know how it was wrinkled and you know stuff you know that is it had turned jet black his legs had you know his body had turned jet black and it's almost like when he breathed it was like fish scales you can see you know on the inside except where he had like scratch because he was scratching and all for several months which went, went into several years and he had dug his skin up I mean he had great big pop sores all over him Mumia's ear this was last year year before last his ears was coming away from his face um, you know, and he was huge inside. We managed to wage a battle to get him the hepatitis C cure, and they started treating him for 
the um you know, you know, for the hepatitis C, giving him some kind of cream and was putting him in baths um, with a solution in it in order to ease the itching. And also they told him that he had cirrhosis of the liver. Now, when Mumia went into that prison, he'd had none of these problems. He developed the cirrhosis of the liver only because they refused to. For two years, we waged a two-year battle in court. Um in order to get Mumia the hepatitis C. When we first started the battle, Mumia, the very tip of Mumia's liver was calcified and are beginning to get uh, cirrhosis. By the time they gave Mumia the right to get the hepatitis C, and are only after being forced in court, and uh, when lawyers was caught for the DOC lying and manipulating papers, when he went to court, they gave him the right for the hepatitis C, and um, he took that, and everything was, you know, was cool. Um, but, you know, okay. he gets this Pam. up for a while. But now we're back to where yeah. he's at right now. Excuse yeah, me. yeah. And, and what can the public do about this? I mean, uh, what's what, what do you suggest that people do about his present situation now? It seems like he's got COVID-12, I mean, COVID-19, and it he seems like he's got a heart uh, situation as he's well as body so what, Yeah, what can the public and, do to help right now? Right. They can put pressure on the DOC, and our number is 717-728-2573. Um, the governor number here, Governor Wolf, 717-787-2500. That's Governor Wolf. The DA here is uh, Larry Krasner. His number is 267-456-1000. That's the DA Krasner. You know, that's one of the things, you know, that we you, that we do. But we need people to organize. You can go on um, the campaign to bring Momia home website. You can go on the mobilization number four. Mumia, Mobilization for Mumia, you know, website, and get all the thorough, detailed information. We're asking people, because a lot of people ask what it is that they can, you know, that they can do. And, uh, you know, I want to ask people, do what you can do. And, uh, like, when we have a politician that's running for office, and uh, you ring doorbells, you get out into the street, you put the information out, you make phone calls. We need mice, and, uh, you know, to keep this movement going. And uh, it's clear that this government is in the process of committing cold-blooded pre meditated murder. Mumia has been proven innocent and are, and they're holding them. The um uh Mrs. Maureen Faulkner, who is the cop who um was murdered in nineteen eighty one and not by Mumia, she has said Mumia is gonna die in that prison. Just a few weeks ago when Cohen Kaepernick and all came out after thoroughly investigating the case and demanded the release of Mumia, we're not asking for no trial. He can't get a fair trial in there. We're demanding the release of Mumia based on evidence and all factual evidence that he is innocent and you know um the facts that judicial prosecutorial and um judicial prosecutor and police misconduct is what is 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 what's holding him in the da has released 15 other people from jail based on those same on that same criteria but he will not do it for Mumia and when the FOP said they want Mumia dead and he's going to die in here this is not the first time Mumia has suffered through this stuff but here it is again his body can't take too much I was told by the doctor that this congested uh, congenitive heart failure, and you know, it's something that only 50% of the people, you know, live past, you know, um, five years. He also said that with Mumia's condition, cirrhosis of the liver, which he got because of this prison, and you know, the um, congest, you know, the heart failure, the skin problem that he's having, and having COVID twice, and you know, Mumia has, don't have good chances. And also, you know, we're demanding the release, the release of Mumia based on facts. And, you know, what we're asking people to do, not only to call them, 
you know, but call the media and, you, know, you know, if you know any legislators, and you know, or ask your community to speak out. And you know, um, Brother Bodine, Shelsa Bodine, he's a DA in San Francisco. He's the son of Kathy Bodine and uh, Brother Gilbert. He's a DA in um in San Francisco, and uh, when young folks stepped to him about Mumia and told him the facts, what he did, he immediately texted um, in front of them um, D.A. Krasner here in Philadelphia and told him, you know, you got to explain to me what's going on here. This is what they're saying. Make this man speak. Make him speak to the, you know, um, the act, you know, to the facts of what is going on here. We got to challenge, you know, each and every last, you know, city official and our um, prominent, you know, uh, ministers and things and get on, get them on board. It seems like Mumia is old enough to qualify to be released under the COVID uh, situation as a elderly prisoner, but obviously right. it's too late to do that. But he at least he needs to be taken out of that environment as soon as he's stabilized enough to be able to be released. Yes, yes. And, you uh, know, the power of the people can do this. And our yeah. money is alive today okay. only because of the power of the people. And yes. I will send you those numbers. Yes, yeah, send and, me those uh, things and we'll put them at the end of this. And I will keep an eye on this and I will get back to you. Or if something changed, you get in contact with us, okay? I sure will. Okay. Okay, on All the right, move. All right, so I'll go and look for those things. Thank you. On the move. Okay. We will continue to follow this case and report on any new developments. So thank you for joining me for this episode, this special episode of Rather Than the Bars. In addition, though, I really would like to say that we cannot produce these kind of programs without uh, the support of our audience. Uh, we need to raise donations and funds to uh, keep uh, these kind of programs in front of the public, to uh, shed light behind uh, the walls. Uh, so if you can, go to the realnews.com, uh, their donation site and donate or donate to Rattle in the Bars. Whatever you can give is appreciated. We don't take government funds. That's why we can maintain our independence. Uh, so help us stay on the air and help us get continue to get the word out. Thank you.